Hi, Ariel. Good morning. Thanks for joining morning, me here Dave. today. How are you? I'm really good. How are you doing? Great, man. Thanks for having me today. Yeah. How are you making out with this uh, crazy situation? How's it affecting you? I wouldn't say it's negative. I, I would say that uh, work's been more positive, mm -hmm. I think. Um, I've been doing the remote mixing now for, I think it's about close to seven years. So the work hasn't changed for me much, except the fact that I'm in my own home studio now. Mm -hmm. And I, I, this is now I'm going on, we're almost two and a half, three years uh, since I built the room. And uh, so that's been the positive. Uh, the negative in the beginning was pretty much I have a five-year-old, so that that kind of uh, became quite daunting to have, uh, you know, a little guy around running around when, uh, you know, when you're trying to mix records. Hmm. Um, aside from that, it's been great. I've been able to, uh, I've noticed that a lot of my YouTube videos that I've done education stuff for when I did like uh, mix con events and things of that nature have shot up in views and people were contacting me for uh, whether I teach or do any private lessons. And I do have an education background. Um, and I started doing private lessons on Zoom, which was really cool. I don't even call them much of lessons. I'm calling them virtual mentoring lessons because mm -hmm. I try to tailor it towards the person and try to figure out where they are lacking and where they can improve and things of that so it's been it's been positive for me. Uh, life is definitely different as far as not being able to go out. Um, I'm also the co-chair of the producer and engineer wing in New York for the Recording Academy. So a lot of the times we would do meetings in person and we get to hang out with our peers. That's not happening, but we're doing it on Zoom. So there's pretty much there's no excuses for anyone not to show up these days. Um, but it's, it's been great as far as that, obviously I want everything to go back to normal, but mm -hmm. in due time, I, I, I'm positive about where things are heading, but I think it's also opened up a lot of opportunities for, uh, for people to be aware of how remote working mm -hmm. is in general, on, uh, just in all, all careers pretty much. Yeah. So that personal, personal connection is through zoom now, and you had already started to, to work that way before. We got into the situation then. Yeah, I mean, for me in the beginning, it was mostly the reason I got into it was at one point I had two studios that I was, one of them I was pretty much uh, working out of someone's facility where we sort of just became partners in the business aspect of it. And then I had a uh, private mix room with a buddy of mine um, who does a lot of great jazz work. And what I started noticing is that I had to charge more money if people wanted to come into the mix because they're essentially booking me out, booking my room. So I had to pay the room as well. Mm. What I noticed was I started offering people, well, you can do unattended mixes at this rate. And my manager would start getting, the, there was more work happening there. And I had to figure out a way to make it work. So for me, the way that I made it work was at the time there was a, a program called NiceCast. It was a third party program where it was streaming at 320 kilobytes per second, which is, you know, it's good. It's high quality MP3, mm -hmm. but you're not getting the full frequency spectrum. What I did was I, I figured out a way to make it work where I would send the clients the mix. They would send me bullet points of the changes. They already heard the high quality, the 20, you know, the 24, 32 bit uh, mix. And then to do the changes, we would do them live. Mm. So they already, they didn't have to compare an MP3 or anything. They already had in their head what it was. So we would just go quickly. And now I'm using a program called, it's from a company called Audio Movers. It's called Listen To. And it's great because you could stream at high quality, you know, pretty much 24 bit. You could even go up to 32 bit. I could, I could basically stream with less than like a second of lag time. Mm. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, obviously, it depends on their their connection as well, but it works well, and it's it, you know you can actually put the plug in on Pro Tools, so you're not dependent on the you know a third party program or some aggregate in the middle or anything like that. It's great. It's mm. it just works out well, and I enjoy it. I get to be home and I get to be a dad, which is my favorite <laughs> job. Great, but you've been working with some really impressive people over the time: the Madonna's and P Diddy, Imagine Dragons, Andre Pacelli. Um, chain smokers yeah, I've, and so on. I've had a pretty long career. How has you know, this changed your workflow? How has this changed the way that you uh, 
the way that you you process? I'll be honest with you. I think that for me, I feel more of an artistic approach to mixing than I ever did hmm. because I remember going into a studio and they would have like the day booked out and you had to get everything done in a day. It's it's almost like a gift and a curse. Like you go in with that mentality that you have to get it done because the client is paying top dollar for a major room in New York, mm -hmm. let's say we're on base. And now it's great because I can literally come downstairs and work. And if I have an idea or if I wake up in the morning and I want to continue working on a mix at six o'clock in the morning, I could, or if mm -hmm. I want to continue working at night and I have an idea, um, that's, that's where it's been the positive the negative is when people know that you have access, you're pretty much on call, it oh, seems God. like. They'll be mm -hmm. like, hey, I need this stem. I have a show. Well, not now, but you know, when they're doing shows, a DJ will contact me and say, hey, I'm doing a show tonight. Can you send me these stems? Or this, art, this producer wants to do a remix. Can you send me just these stems? And then they know that you have access to it, which isn't the end of the world because what I do is I'm – I'm putting everything up on the cloud anyway, so I'm able to access things on my phone. And I mean, technology is just, it's mind blowing what you can do these days. Um, so I feel like there's definitely more time being spent working, but I don't even look at this as a job. To, so it's. Can I, can I have a look around your space? What, uh, sure. What's your setup look Here, like we'll, there? We'll, we'll do this. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a huge space, but mm -hmm. you can pretty much see that this is my main workstation. I have some pieces. I'm not really using anything as far as analog. Everything I do is digitally in the box. Mm -hmm. um, and then speakers. Oh, yeah. I'm using the Head Type 20s yep. uh, with the Argosy stand with the ISO acoustics. Yes. And I have uh, NS10s. Yep. Uh, you know, I've been using NS10s for years. I also have a backup pair down there. Um, and I have another backup pair in my. Uh, in my uh, closet somewhere, I'm obsessed uh, with the NS10s. It's a it's a love hate relationship. <laughs> Very good. Well, my theory, my pro my approach to setting up rooms is, you need to start with the monitors. Have good monitors. Get them on stands. Get your tilt. Get your equilateral right. Deal with the, that energy, the reflections on the stands, and then go to the first reflections. And if you can do that, you know, depending upon your SPL or the size of your room, you may have already dealt with 85, 95% of the challenges that uh, that you could have. So it looks as though you've got a nice, nice, clean, friendly setup there. I think once what you're saying is once you get to that percentage, a lot of it in general is just getting used to your room. Mm. Um, that's the most important. I mean, you have to know. Uh, it took me... It's good. The room didn't take me that long to get used to. Um, I would say it was a couple months, but I would say within, I know I said that I built this room two and a half, three years ago. We're going on that in January. But I think that for me now, most recently within the last six months, I'm getting to a point where I'm not really needing to take my work out of the room to be confident what I'm sending to the clients. Yeah. I've been going more with my gut reaction, my feeling on it, and then I'll send it right away. I'm not really sitting on the mix too long. Um, maybe, I mean, the way that I generally work is if I'm very confident about it, I'll send it to them that day, but usually I'll come back the next morning with fresh ears and listen, but I'm not taking it out of my room. I mean, it's my workflow is just, and that, that's the positive of having a, a home studio that you've built and you know are used to. Yeah, that's great. Let, let me ask you a question. I'd like to get your reaction to uh, to this. This is something I've been doing for years and I found that it works very well for me. When I get something that's got a creative component, you know, it could be a rendering, artwork, uh, uh, an ad, anything like that, something I've asked for and it comes back. Um, I always open up, I look at it, I look for it, I look at it as the content, but then I close it and I leave it and I come back to it much later. And I find that when I come back with, with fresh eyes, I'm not so, I'm not entering it with my own bias. I'm not looking at it from my perspective. You know, is this what I asked for? Is this the way I do it? I look at it with an open, more objective view. And I, I'm more open to what other people have to offer, or even things beyond 
what myself and that other pre person may have originally envisioned. So I find it very important to have that fresh look and come back. Can you relate to that at all? Is that, um, is that something that you, you find um, important as well? Absolutely. For me, what I'm learning as I'm getting older and just having more, being in the business for as long as I have, that I'm reacting more on my gut instincts once I start overthinking something and it's not coming from the heart, yep. then it, once I stop reacting to things, I'll walk away from it. Uh, I'll take a 30 minute walk and take my dog for a walk. Um, before the pandemic, I was, uh, I was studying, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which helped. So I would, you know, usually I'd start in the morning working and I take a, I do a lunch class or right. start later and they do a dinner. Uh, it helped me gain perspective. Hmm. Um, also I'm able, like today I would pick up my son from the bus. So I'll take a break at some point. Um, I just feel like the breaks are important, especially when you're losing perspective and I don't want to overthink things. That's, that's kind of what you start doing when you're just getting into the business or a couple of years in, you're making these decisions because you're not so sure, not so confident. But for me, I'm realizing that mixing is not about making something sound great or perfect. It's about uh, making it feel good. Mm. And that's, that's something that I try to instill in a lot of my students, um, even into my clients. But I think now in my career, what you're saying is, you know, holds a lot of value because people are coming more to me for my taste rather than making something sound good. And it all plays into each other and having a fresh perspective on on, on the art that they're that you're given. Right. Oh, that's great. So it's kind of that feel technical quotient, getting the right uh, balance. Totally. There's a balance. Some, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And if you're not careful, you become so entrenched in one mindset or something that you you kind of lose Absolutely. that other perspective. Like you got to remember the mix. You're looking at the entire puzzle. You're not just focused on one section. You know, um, that's where in the beginning I was always, you know, you got to make the drums knock and you got to, you know, but now it's always like the, the, the longer you're in the business, the less you're soloing. Uh, instruments and vocals. You're just looking at it from a bigger perspective and a big piece of the pie. Yeah, well, that's excellent. Excellent. You have um, projects you're working on now, something interesting that... Uh, yeah, I mean, a few things I can't talk about, but yeah. I am working on something for uh, CBS television that a producer friend of mine did. Um, I just finished this EP by this amazing artist uh, named Stella Cole. There's a few projects that I will be starting in the next week and some random just, you know, one-off singles that I'm mixing here and there. So it's it's been it's been quite busy. And then uh, starting mid-December, there's a band that I work with, that an accomplished band in France called the Celtic Social Club. Um, I've been working with the producer and drummer of that band for over 10 years. So I start their next project next month which is first time that we're doing it this way which is tough but uh last year i had gone out to france to co-produce and record the album mm. and then i flew back to new york to took a two-week break since i started which was interesting because what was amazing about that project is i got to start the rough mixes in the studio which is something i haven't done in whew, it's got to be like 10 years now, yeah. um, which was nice. You know, it was I, I tried not to go too deep, but then I knew also that I was mixing it down the line. Right. So I was able to put a little bit more uh, uh, emphasis on, on plugins and balance and things of that nature. And uh, we took a two week break and then he flew in and stayed with me and we finished the project. But now it's going to be all remote, which is the first time in 10 years that he's not flying into New York to mix with me. So uh -huh. it's, a bit, it's a bit sad, but yeah, um, yeah but it's going to be great. And there's, there's a few other projects that are not fully solidified yet, but uh, I'm sure you'll hear about it once. Oh, brilliant. Once this airs. Yeah, that's great. Well, listen, Ariel, thank you very much for your time. I really enjoy talking to you and uh and hearing about what you're doing i hope uh you and your family stay safe there and uh and have a good thanksgiving thank you man you too <laughs> and thank you for having me oh it's my pleasure thanks again thank